this is Ronnie. Uh, okay, yeah, it's Christmas Eve. Uh, my Christmas project that I started saving for a year ago, basically right after Christmas, I got finished. My new surround sound, I reworked, my old one was dead. This is no BS, I'm going to show exactly what I got going. And the total cost without the sub is $325, okay, including the new amp. First we're starting with, it's a Sony amplifier. 5.1 surround sound, 140 watts per channel. It means it has five channels set up in it. I can't remember the number. It's $178 on Amazon. And then, you see in here, I have AC Infinity uh, cooling fans. Okay, a dual setup. They were $18 for the two fans with the on off switch. And then this switch right there. Is automatic and it runs off a temp sensor back there that was another $16 okay that whole setup was basically 32 bucks the biggest problem with any electronics is overheating them or getting moisture in them and it ain't raining in here but yeah that will fry your stuff or run in wrong homage okay that's the amp okay 178 bucks those speakers right here the main ones JBL 6x9 three ways uh, stage something number uh, forty two dollars for the pair the horn on top three dollars well two dollars and ninety eight cents a piece those JBLs are rated at uh, I think eighty watts max but I'm putting more of that to them RMS but it says total max will take two ten a piece okay those horns are rated at sixty watts max RMS I'm putting extra 60, 70 into them. But they have a basically a limiter inside of them. They're solid state. And I said they're rated at 60 RMS, but they will handle up to 400 RMS. And the way that works, they say they have a protection circuit in them. Uh, the protection circuit is basically a thermal resistor. The higher the resistor gets with the amps going through it, it starts bringing the ohms up and up along with the heat and the horsepower so it basically cuts the power to the horn okay but I've never hit the limit on it yet never noticed where it started backing down but yeah they're rated at 60 watts max RMS and I'm pumping 140 to them so there you go their, their system works those were from Parts Express I got the JBLs off of Amazon too uh, the speaker boxes they're just automotive you know, for 6 by 9s in uh, out of Walmart, $20 a pair for the boxes. For that one, that one. So another 20 for that one up there and that one up there without the speakers in I put padding in them. I'll explain that. But to do this whole setup, while I'm right here, I can show you quick. Uh, the speakers are 4 ohms. This amp is rated at 6 ohms minimum. And you don't want to go under 6 ohms because you will overheat the things all the time. And the more they trip, and the quicker you burn stuff out. The lower the ohms uh, is more heat, okay? Basically, and heat kills amplifiers. So, to make all this work together, uh, if you run them in parallel, 4 ohms and 8 ohms basically drops down to below 4 ohms. Okay, so I, if you run them in series, but then it don't sound for shit, you just add the ohms together. This speaker's ohms plus this one, and this is four, this one's eight, that would be 12 ohms. But it doesn't frequency respond correctly. you got to run them in parallel. So to bring it up to uh, actually 7.98 ohms, I have uh, these, right there, you can see that, I think. That is a wire-wound axial aluminum uh, encased. Uh, 50 watt 4 ohm resistor okay it's rated at 50 watts but it'll take it I had them hot melt glued on just to see when I was testing because hot melt glue will start letting loose at 180 degrees the low temp stuff and uh, the high temp stuff will actually let loose at about 220 so yeah when I was testing them they were getting warm those little resistors I got the same thing on each side up here because I want the same ohms but there's where I mount them up there. Hot melt glue, just for experimental purposes. Cut loose, broke loose, and they were hanging off the side. They didn't stay stuck. Was basically, I put the heat gun on the resistor, and the temp was 187 degrees. Give or take a couple, okay? And they all did come off. So then I had to go double check the uh, data sheet for those resistors. 
because you're thinking 180, that's hot. You can't hardly put your fingers on them, okay? You know, put your hand in the oven at 180 degrees and hold it there. But these uh, resistors are rated up to 250 Celsius, which is 482 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm a long way from that. And the wires haven't burned through, and I've been putting the screws to or testing them. So, yeah, that's the way to go. And I said, I'm running 7.98 amp, I mean ohms, 7.98 ohms uh, to each channel in resistance, okay? So that's how that works. The speaker boxes I have padded inside with sound insulation very, very, very tightly, okay? Uh, 6x9s are made basically to be free air. And this is basically a sealed enclosure totally. Not going to port it. The reason I padded the heck out of them and have them super sealed, super tight, basically, is because I have a subwoofer down there. You know, I already had that. Uh, if I didn't have a subwoofer, I would have used about a third of the padding inside. And I, and I would have drilled half-inch holes, at least two on each side, here and over here. Not in the front. Not in the back, you know, not back there, not in the front, you know, like these guys got a tune port in the back. <coughs> not tune on the port. Tune port is is just uh, acoustically kind of a joke, all right? These have an air vent in the back, so when the bass flexes and goes back, it pushes waves back, but they come out the speaker out of a hole that big. Then they bounce off the wall and then they come back. So they're delayed from what's coming out the front, even off the throw. It gives you more response, more wiggle, you call it, as I call it. But, it, you know, uh, I like, I need this base tight. But, yeah, I would, if I want, if I didn't have the sub, I would drill at least a couple half-inch holes in the side of this box, use a third of the padding to let the air pressure out so this woofer can move back and forth, like, you know. If it's got sealed, it can only go like a far. If it's open air and lets the air pressure out, it can travel a lot farther, which makes a lot more of the bass sound waves, okay? But they're not tight. Then it's, uh, you know, there's, it's not doom doom, it's brr, brr, brr. But that's what that sub does. So I didn't have to do that. That's why I want them. I basically set them up so they're very tight and they respond. On the crossover setup I have on here, is basically set at like 68 hertz for the sub is down uh, as low as I can go on my amp is I believe like 32 hertz on the crossover but this JVL sub will go down to 20 hertz which will rattle your lady's feelings pretty damn quick you don't need that if you live in an apartment or you have neighbors I live out in the country with no one within a mile of me either direction if I had this in the city, I'd have the cops on me in five minutes when I turn it up, all right? But that's the reason I'm going to show you <coughs> what these sound like without the sub and what they sound like with the sub. And the setup on these speakers is basically the same 6x9s with the same horn setup, the same resistor setup. But they're rated a little higher, but those were, uh, I believe, Pro Audios from Walmart for $24. The whole setup with everything, minus the sub, including the cooling fans and everything, I said I was saving $10 a week for basically almost a year. So if I could get it done for $520, bucks, you know, with a new amp and everything, that's what I was going to do. Uh, total price in this without that sub is $345. In a lot of experiment. Not including the other amps that I bought off eBay that were used in junk. And blew up my other speakers. But that's what you can build that set for. And I said, unless you really want to rattle some stuff, you don't need a sub. You can just put uh, airflow holes on the sides. Smaller ones, just to let the air pressure out of these boxes. Not out the front. Don't try to make a tuned port. you got to have all kinds of computer shit. And then you never know what you're bouncing off of. And if it's coming out front, it's still out of time with the bass. It, if you look at real good expensive speakers, they don't got no freaking tuned ports shooting out the front. But they got two ports inside and they run passive radiators out the front. Maybe I can point you to video that. But okay, now there you go. And if it's, I bought this uh, used. That was a $600 subwoofer. 300 watts, 10 inch. And it's got a passive radiator underneath. 
another 10 inches shoots straight down and it has uh, two uh, two inch ports for the airflow so that way it keeps the amplifier cool that's you know inside the back but I can show you how to build one of them for basically you know, 100 120 bucks with all new parts if you're handy and know how to do a little war working or you could go buy an old blown up one put replacement parts in it pretty cheap I said I paid 90 I think 90 or 95 dollars and it wasn't hardly a year old but, you know, if I had a smaller space, you don't need it. If you set your other speakers up right, you don't need a sub. Get in your car, you know. You can listen to your normal people listen to their car stereo. There's no subwoofer in their car. The newer ones, and they'll just rattle your head. But, you know, the ones you go boom, boom down the street and piss you off, you can hear for a mile away. That's the ones that got subs in the trunk, okay? So, yeah, you don't need that sub, but uh, I have it and I use it. So All right, now I was looking for... <laughs> I was looking for a Christmas song that had all kinds of frequency range response from super low bass to kind of high, you know, and then mid and all that so you could hear it. And I can't really turn this thing up. I think it's not going to come out of my phone much. But I want to show you a difference about what I'm talking about of why I have these speakers. They got decent bass, but they ain't near what they will do. I said I got them set up run at 60 some hertz which is the lower the number for subs or the 6x9 which is the sub the 6x9 part the lower the number of the hertz is the lower the bass you're gonna get okay these are set up just tight and punchy as hell because I have that sub to fill in and take care of the whole bottom end but these would rattle your socks without a subwoofer in an area this size this is basically 16 by 20 it, it, It'll rattle your socks right now pretty decent, but I'm gonna have it turned down and this is a Chinese song Okay, I look for Americans on nothing that had decent frequency response All right So we're gonna try it and just listen to the background and I'm gonna try to have it turned down here Okay, this is talking normal voice At the horsepower I'm working and these horns I like, I love those electronic horns, the piezos, because they are really quiet on low power. That doesn't, over, but the more, more horsepower you put to them, the more they tweet, and the more they tweet, and yeah, it will crank you. Now, I'm going to back this up a little bit, because I was talking, but yeah, I'm talking pretty damn loud right now again to get just over the speakers and I didn't even see what I'm running at for horsepower which is I'm on 28 for volume this thing goes to 75 okay we're gonna turn up a little bit and this is no sub all right oh yeah listen to the guitar player in the background I don't know if I said that listen to the background I said this is Chinese music it's in Chinese don't worry if you can't understand the words it doesn't matter. It's good music. Now, see, listen. Listen to the guitar player in the background right now. Just. You hear that little rock and roll riff in the background? All right, we're going to start putting the screws to her a little bit. You can see on the screen up there I'm on 40. This is no sub, okay? that came out but <clears throat> that's with no sub I said and that's with those six by nines basically I'm set up to only move and wiggle down to 60 Hertz this will go down to 20 I have it set right now to about 35 Hertz I'm gonna turn on the sub again and I'll let you hear the difference but I said you can set these speakers up if you bent these boxes right 
they're supposedly going to do that close to the same as this sub, okay? So you don't need a sub unless you're really cranking on stuff. But like I said, you ain't going to do this in town very long without having the cops on your butt. And if you're in an apartment, you're sure as hell in a load of deep crap. All right, what do you think of that music for Chinese? They didn't learn that in China, did they? That's what you get when Chinese learn how to bootleg and get through the great internet firewall of China and hear American rock and roll music. Is that cool as shit? All right, we're running the sub now. Here's the difference. talking level there's talking level right there all right without that sub i'm still yelling and i i got a loud voice we'll back her down yeah there's 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 talking loud voice i'm at 29 out of 75 so yeah there you go my little project i got it figured out man took me a while because i got bad equipment right off the start with a crap amp that was destroying every speaker because i'm going to tear to that this winter yet See what was smoking it? Oh, we're just going to go shoot it. Me and my twin brother with his high-power rifle. Ah, I'll see if I got time. Otherwise, I'm going to scatter it. I'm sure they ain't going to try to resell to nobody else. But yeah, there you go. 325 bucks for the amp, the coolant fans, the speakers. Oh, and the center speaker, that was an old Anke I had. You can pick them up on eBay for like two bucks. They just got a center channel and it's just two little three-inch freaking drivers and a little piezo. But yeah, there you go, man. I got my system all worked out now. I said, it's made for surround sound for movies, not for playing music. Those are set up, at, you know, for basically just music with PA, and there's whole different settings. And I said, they're ported in the back. And, you know, I got these guys in here. And I can rattle a whole house with this because I'm running, you know, there's 12-inch there's uh, subs in these and a little piezo super horns in there and these are old techniques from the early 80s and yeah they will rattle this whole house and if that ain't enough uh, and I'm running a 500 watts a channel times 4 on these up here you know that's a little more than 140 and if I want to really rattle some fillings I got a couple PA amps in my PA setup that's running over 5,000 watts stereo into two ohms okay <laughs> each amp plus I got another driving amp uh, 800 watt PV amp for running just the monitors when we don't need all the horsepower I use one amp just to run monitors and one amp to run the main PA but when you get outside and you got a blast we got to pump both of them and yeah and outside you don't put them facing each other <laughs> I said, this is surround sound. This is not concert music sound. You ever see a concert where they got speakers aiming back at them called major shitty feedback and sounds like ass <laughs> if you don't scatter your shit from the feedback. But yeah, man, there you go. It can be done. You know, unless you know who you're buying something from for an amp. I said it cost me, I think, $69. Well, a new one was $170. All the bull crap I went through, and I'm still trying to get some money back out of the weasel. I know I'll get at least half of it back, but it wasn't worth the harassment. I scattered two sets of speakers that were working. So, you know, go brand new and play with it. 
Gail. Peace, love. Love everybody. Like I said, always put a hand down to help somebody down. If they say pick me up and carry me, walk away. Merry Christmas to everybody and Happy New Year and thanks for watching. I wanted to explain everything I was doing because I like jacking around on Facebook and YouTube when I make my videos because sometimes I make certain points that are a little up or down from reality, but it gets people watching and checking and then they start learning. And I said I'm not a teacher, but I'm good at finding ways to have people want to learn by themselves. So there you go, man. That's a setup. I don't think you're going to find any setup for 350 bucks without a sub that's going to come near this. And I did a lot of experimenting with sound meters and electronics and everything. And yeah, I'm very, very happy with it. And it ain't blown up anymore. I can put the screws to it all night long, man. Fiddles keep rocking. But yeah, it's not recommended even to have that much stuff unless you got a nice, easy thumb on the volume if you live in the town with neighbors or if you live in an apartment because you start putting the screws this baby it's gonna wake the freaking neighbors definitely okay have a good one love y'all merry christmas happy new year maybe i can get another video out uh before the new year but yeah man that's my christmas present i've been saving for that project for a year and i got it done and i actually had an extra hundred some dollars left in my pocket so I could buy a new battery for my pickup and a new water, uh, new fuel pump for my Kia. It's all gone, but I had it saved up, and I got it worked out, man. Love you all. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Bye-bye.